So before we get started naming who we think are the... Are you okay? Mission accomplished. I cut you off. <laughs> so before we get started naming uh, who we think are the players that need to show up for this season, pause this video and drop your offensive and defensive players in the comment section for who you think needs to show up or be gone this season. That's it. So pause the video right now and, uh, and drop those in the comments and, uh, and play along. Uh, once you hear what we have to say, uh, you know, give us your comments on it. We'll talk to you guys soon. Don't forget to hit, ah, good job. <laughs> so Daniel Garis uh, asks, which Bills need to uh, need to show up this year? I think it's a fair question, mm. right? You want to split it in the offense and defense? Mm, yeah, 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 let's do that. Let's or how about that. this? How about this? Okay. We each pick one. Sure. Offense and defense. Mm. Can't be the same one. Okay, that's fine. All right. Uh, let's do offense first, all right? On the count of three, let's both say who oh, the offensive crap. one is. Oh, and we'll crap. see where we are. Because you're not going to get mine. Are you sure? Yeah, you're not going to get mine. I don't think you're going to get mine. <laughs> All right, that's fair. Ready? One, One two, two, three. three. Zay Mitch Jones. Morris. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mitch we're good. Morris. Mitch Morris. Mitch that's, Morris. Absolutely. Interesting. All right, so please go ahead. I would love to hear about Zay Jones. Uh, it's 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 going to sound, for those that have subbed, long time ago it's going to sound like another broken record of what we've been doing and what we've been talking about with zay jones but it's i know he led the team and i know he started to improve near the end of the year i know he started to develop chemistry but he still he still has a question mark about him because if you didn't why are you bringing beasley and brown to and, and pay them what you paid them essentially Okay, now what? It's your leading receiver from a six and ten team, Zay Jones, is now your third option. Because you know Brown and Beasley are making the team. You don't know if Zay is, even though he 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 made some great strides in the end of the year. I really think he needs to challenge Beasley in the slot, either in camp or when, if he makes the team, if or when he makes the team in the games. He needs he needs to be that guy. He can't keep doing this. Right. And I know. I know Allen is a catch rocket the ball like arm. a punt returner. Exactly. You know he's a rocket. Yeah, but he get. He can't be doing this all the time. Yeah. You can't do it. They got. He, he used to catch a lot of his passes behind the line of scrimmage mm -hmm. when he was in college. You know those little quick hitters and stuff. Well, you have McKenzie now for that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what his specific role is going to be. Is he going to be the the Ty Naseki slash Lorenzo Alexander and just fly we're just I, I mean, can play outside I can play inside I can, I can do can. this I can, can do gadget stuff I can well, do I think one thing that gets lost with Zay Jones he's got 4 or 5 speed he's not slow no, he's not slow but you, you don't, got, you don't he's got the same speed like, you don't think of him as a burner no no you don't uh, he can move boy can move so is he and I'm not you know, I'm not even going to say it what I'm not even going to say it I'm not even going to have to now I can't because I, people are going to Send help for me. I, I'll just say this. Okay. Jerry Rice ran a four six. Yeah. Okay. Rice looked the same as he ran every. Like you know, how you could see guys accelerate. You didn't see that with Rice. He right. just he was yeah. always consistent. He was yeah. always running the same pace. Yeah. The style is what Jones is like. He right. run. You don't think he's a burner because he's always running four or five all the if, time. If I were um, in the Brian Dable, you know, if, if I were under Brian Dable as, as a member of his staff, You'd I would be, be crushed. Like, I, yeah, <laughs> emotionally, I would be, I would, I would be stunted, but, um, I would be grabbing as much film as I could find on Marvin Harrison and giving it to Zay Jones and say, watch this. Ooh, you you just go ahead Harrison. and watch this. Yeah. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Are they of comparable size? Uh, I think Zay's a little bit taller than Harrison. But uh, Harrison was, I think, just a, maybe a shade over six foot, and Zay's not much more than that. Okay. So, um, but the reason that I say that is because Harrison made Peyton's life easy, right? It it was to a point where it was wasn't a no, the other way around. It wasn't the other way around. No, no. okay. Mm -hmm. No, I know it was, it was early in Peyton's career. It was, but Harrison made it easy for Peyton to throw him the ball, right? That's I think that's the difference here. Zay hasn't done that. Zay hasn't made it easy. 
for any quarterback to get him the football. When Zay's getting the ball, it's because that's play design, right? Zay, Zay's not you earning those he's receptions. Breaking, okay. He's not earning those receptions. He's getting them through play design. Um, really? Okay. That's just my opinion. So I would go back and watch as much film on Marvin Harrison as I, as I could. Understand that that's from forever ago in the NFL. Mm-hmm. But I think there's still a lot that you can learn from, from a player like that. And Marvin Harrison's okay. a guy that gets forgotten about a lot. You're talking about great phenomenal. receivers in the NFL, and he just gets forgotten. Well, they, they forget about him because of the, quarter, the caliber of quarterback I, yeah, I think, has been elevated. Yeah. I mean, you don't hear about the Marks brothers too much because Marino was so phenomenal. Right. Even though they were great in and of themselves, they were sure. great. Mitch Morris, yeah. I think, is so... Yeah, so here's why, right? So um, we mm. we talk about Reed every now and again, right? And here comes now a Reed disciple over to play center, right? Different line structure than what they have in Kansas City, right? So the, the design of the line is very different. However, what? From the wall to Swiss cheese. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's very different, you know? Um, What's up, you sieve? <laughs> Mitch Morris is like, I heard about waterfalls in Buffalo, but I didn't know it was like this. Um, so, the <laughs> so I think Mitch Morris has to immediately walk in and be the captain of that offense because you're paying him to be that. No doubt. You're no paying doubt. him to no. be that. You're paying him to be in charge. Um, he has to be in charge day one, um, and he has to own that offensive line because of the contract you gave to him. You brought him in to be the guy. You He has to own of that, almost that whole offense. He and Allen have to be best friends. If they're, they, he and Allen should be roommates. That's the two of them need to be right next. Are to him and Star the highest paid offense and defense? Yeah, yeah, I think well, so. Star is the whole team, but more ways than one. Yes. Very interesting. Yeah. That you have an offensive lineman, and defensive lineman, the highest paid players on your team. Yeah, I think so. Um, i Jerry's. Did they renegotiate Jerry's deal? Let me, let me just check that real fast. Because I feel like they might have... I'll just check that, but I'm pretty sure Morris is... That's all right. We'll cut to commercial. Do you have trouble sleeping at night? I think significantly different from Zay, right? From an offensive standpoint, we already kind of know where Zay is and we're looking for him to prove. With Morris, you need to prove that you, you need to prove that you're worth that contract because that was a big contract. They made him a highest paid, paid center in the NFL, so you really you the spotlight's on you. This is your offense right now. You and Allen need to own that together. So Allen needs to hold the wide receivers and running backs accountable for their work, and Morris has to hold everybody else accountable. So it brings me to a couple of things that I'm curious about with Morris is. Where do the line protection calls come from? Is Morris calling them? Is is are they going yeah. to expect Allen to? No. I don't I can't imagine that they are. That's right. Why you, that's why you get Morris. You want right. to take elite you want to add stuff to mm-hmm. Allen's plate little by little. Right. And that's that's one of the things you add a little bit later than what you want to add to add now. Right. But is it really a surprise that McDermott would covet a Reed player? So not really, right? It's, it's so not, fascinating. It's not really that much of a surprise. It's not a surprise. I mean, what do you think about it? It's not at all. Yeah. You're just like, okay, wow, it came from Reed. Sweet. Well, I also think that with the Chiefs this year, when they looked at um, spending the money on Morris or going into the draft in 2019, with the centers that were in the draft this year, I think they were like, okay, I think we can roll the dice and grab something later. You know, that's what they did because they grabbed me, uh, me, Cole Hardman at round two. Mm -hmm. I think they think Mahomes is good enough to be able to put a liability or a learning curve at center, whereas they didn't feel that last season. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a big thing for Mahomes is that safety blanket of having Mitch Morris is going to be gone now. Yeah, now you got to call you got to call your protections down. Yeah, or he doesn't have to. It's not like he's, but maybe he may see something differently. In the center now, mm-hmm. where he put all of his trust in Morris. Now right. he's he's that relationship's gone. Yep. It's like it's like getting a new catcher. When you when yeah. you're a pitcher, you get a new catcher. It's very different. Mm-hmm. It's a very different relationship. So we'll see where that goes. But I, you know, you're gonna pay this kind of money to Mitch Morris. He's got to earn every dollar of it, um, and he's got to help develop Allen and give Allen the opportunity to learn uh, a bit more because um, 
You know, things are, we talked about it before, things are different between Mahomes and Allen. It's not apples to apples. Yeah. Um, and it won't be till next year. Next year, I think, is really when you can start saying, okay, these guys have now had equal opportunity. Um, they've worked with the same center, which is fascinating to have that correlation now. Um, uh, so I'm very, very curious to see how all of this plays out. Eight. On three? Uh, I, I need a second. I was I thinking a of a couple, and I have, I have a couple. Even it's funny because I have more on the defense, yeah, than the offense. But the defense played better. Yep. Like what? Yep. Okay, I'm good. Um, uh, I'm ready. So on three. Yep. All right. This is the, the 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 defensive player that has to show up in 2019, or else there's going to be questions about their. Yeah. Okay. They got to show up or get out. Show up or go. Okay. Okay. Right. Ready? On three. One. One. Two. two three. three. Kevin Trent Johnson. Murphy. What? Kevin Johnson. Kevin Johnson. Kevin Johnson. So the the guy who they signed, their first free agent that they signed to a one year deal. Yes. He needs to show up. He needs to show up. Okay. All right. That was my Trent Murphy bronze medal yeah. or the silver medal. For yeah. Me. I was gonna Trent say Murphy. Trent Murphy. Yeah. Well, listen. I'll take Trent Murphy first. Yes. So Trent Murphy has to because there's a knock that Trent Murphy is hurt constantly. Okay. In Buffalo, that argument could be made. Although he did play in 13 games last season. Yes. Right. But you could say, like, E.J. Gaines is back, and E.J. Gaines has an injury history, and that's not exclusive to the Bills. But E.J.'s back. Uh, but, again, you're looking at E.J. as he's got to win the starting spot or he's going to be rotational because you're worried about you losing him again, right? Mm-hmm. So with Trent Murphy, I think Trent has to show that he can take over for Shaq. And I really think he's going to get that opportunity to show that he can take over for Shaq Lawson. You didn't pick up Shaq's option. This is the last year in his deal. Mm-hmm. Um there's no point in cutting Shaq. I suppose you could trade him, but um, with Murphy's, Murphy has been effective, right? Mm-hmm. I don't see this team rolling the dice and dealing Shaq for to to give Murphy more opportunity. I just see them not playing Shaq if they want to do that. They'll they'll just play Murphy more. This team doesn't really care about salary. They they don't care what you make. That doesn't salary no, doesn't earn you playing the, time in Buffalo. Yes. You know, yes. uh, so Trent Murphy has to be able to, to generate that pass rush um, opposite of Jerry Hughes. Um, because again, you're looking at first and second down. Um, you're looking at a third, you know, a third and distance situation. Having having Trent Murphy and Jerry Hughes on opposite ends, I mean, that rush is going to get to you quick. Well, early reports are Murphy's been a stud again. Yeah. Right. Right now. Right. Um, I've heard the same. Now, does that does that worry you about Ford? Because that's who he's probably going up against. <laughs> that's a really good point. I don't know. That's a really good point. I don't know who point. he's going up Maybe he's going up against the second team. So maybe in the second, he's, he beat, if he's beating the second. They have familiarity. They're both they from played, Washington. Yeah, they played with each which other Which is Washington. why we said a couple weeks ago, I'm terrified of putting gains on on uh, Landry. But that's another. Yeah, that's a, that's uh, yeah. we talked about that. Uh, that's an interesting conversation. But. They're fun. Those are fun. Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, to me, Murphy's got to he's got to show up, or he's it's time to go, right? Because you could keep him around, but I mean, you look at the money that he's making, and you know, you you can get rid of him next year. Without any penalties. He's he's got to play fifty percent, fifty to fifty five to sixty percent of the snaps for me to say that that contract's worth it this year. And do they with the rotation? Does well, he? I mean, Shaq's, he? that means I mean that means Jerry's playing. 60 Shaq's playing. I mean, if they're all playing 60, percent then well, that's fine. Right? They rotate the interior guys more. You right. know that yeah. because they're getting beat yeah, up. Yeah, they sure do. So you have Kevin Johnson. I have Kevin Johnson. It's interesting where you went initially because uh, that is your thought process, and I love that that's your thought process always. You know, it's always all right. What's he making? Yeah. What's so that's what they're right? expected to contribute. Yeah, you ignored that with Trent Murphy. Well, Trent Murphy you said doesn't three, care yeah. what they doesn't care what they pay you. You just got to produce. Well, I'm talking on uh, game day. That wasn't not to my make the roster. Okay, all right. That yeah. wasn't my because Kevin Johnson's no guarantee to make the roster. He's just on a one year deal. No, they could they I understand pay him whatever they want. I understand that. For the uh, I picked Kevin Johnson for the re- for the amount of people his performance affects. Uh-huh. Okay. Obviously it affects himself if yep. he makes the roster or not. He's in a very right now crowded secondary. Yeah. Very with crowded. guys that are everywhere, with now you have two Frazier and McDermott both are from the defensive back school. They play yeah. defensive back. They coach defensive backs. So they're in that in, in that school. The other thing that's a twist on it that I put, why I, why I decided to select Kevin Johnson, 
is the fact that who was the first cornerback, former first rounder, that they signed last year? Vontae I, Davis. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. That was their first one. So not only pressure to perform in order to make the roster, this is pressure on McDermott and Bean now. Because if he doesn't perform, this is two years in a row, they went out and got a first round, former first round corner who has. Pfft. So now, well, not only not, does his performance affect himself and affect the team, it affects McDermott and Bean. Well, and let's be real the Bills have played the UDFA, the undrafted free agent game, very well with corner. They have not played it well with the free agency pool. No, no, no. You look yeah. at Monty Davis, you look at Philip Gaines, right? And both of those guys didn't even make it through the season. No. I won on their own volition, the other not, right? Yes. So it's. They've I'm just saying they're the gonna put game very they're well. gonna put more of an onus on Kevin to perform this year to prove that they can still scout free agent defensive backs. I mean, Gaines was fine, but the, again, that was that was via trade. They traded for him, you know. So I I don't I think you could probably count that almost like signing a one year deal when they made that deal. But I know it's kind of yeah. I know it's it's kind of kind of a wash. But um, yeah, it's the free agent cornerback game hasn't gone well for them. With incumbent NFL players, with undrafted free agents, they've done they've done a good job. Yeah, yeah, you know, because it's, it's either you know get something, uh, get a guy that's already been playing in a different system, or get a guy who hasn't been played in your system at all and mold them to your image. That's they can coach guys up. That's that's the thing that we always talk about. But I think because of those two factors, and I know I'm, it's a stretch for the second one. I know it's a stretch, but. You're getting a, another, another a second year in a row. You got a former first round pick as one of your cornerbacks that you think will go into the season as a contributor, even though he's on a one year deal. Maybe that was the reason it was only a one year. Mm-hmm. Vontae was two. He right. was a two year deal. Maybe they said, oh, well, we're not going to do this again. But I think a lot of pressure is going to be put on him to play well. Uh, maybe not by the fans. Maybe not. A lot of people will. Oh, he's always injured. He's, he's got to stay healthy. Fan, I don't think the fans have a lot of expectations. No, Kevin Johnson. he's got to stay healthy. Mm-hmm. He's got a crowded secondary to try to break into, and he's probably getting more heat from being a McDermott to perform because the last corner they had left at halftime. <laughs> I'm just saying that's my only that's my only reason why I picked Kevin Johnson. But yeah. my honorable mention for offense uh-huh. would have been Dawkins. Uh, if I didn't pick Jones, I was gonna pick Dawkins. Mm. Dawkins wasn't hateful last year. I mean, he's coming up on a contract year, though. Sure is. So he that's sure why is. he has to perform. <clears throat> that's why I'm okay. saying he's got to perform. Okay, I accept that. You have an honorable mention. Uh, Did you have another guy you were thinking of and just didn't? For offense or defense? Either or. For either or. Um. So for defense, um, it's. I think Star needs to make more of a in-game impact than just a schematic impact from a fan toleration standpoint. Because the fans don't tolerate Star very much. They see him as a big old waste of money. And again, schematically, he's there to do things very specific. This may spin into another episode because I'm about to get really mad at you. Are you? Yeah. All right. That's fine. That's fine. All right. Well, tune in. Tune in later this week. I'm serious. Like people don't like Star. Don't don't yell at me for it. 